Welcome everybody uh, to today's presentation. Uh, today's presentation is going to be covering tips for getting started and customizing SolidWorks. So during this presentation, I'm going to be flipping uh, back and forth between the uh, PowerPoint here in SolidWorks so we get a taste of what exactly I'm talking about during this presentation uh, in a visual sense. So <clears throat> before we jump into the specifics of customizing the SOLIDWORKS software, we're going to first talk about system options and document properties. So both of these are elements that control various aspects of the software, and it's key to know the difference between the two. So with system options, those focus mainly on the elements of the software and its interface. So you can think of stuff like display settings, uh, feature manager control, and import and export options. Those can all be found in the system options section. And then document or excuse me, document properties control aspects of the SOLIDWORKS document that you're working in, the open document. So you can think of stuff like configuration settings, model display settings, and stuff specific to sheet metal and weldments as well, uh, all contained within that section of the SOLIDWORKS software. So with that being said, how can we use these to improve our workflow? Now, I've kind of broken down both the system options and document properties into their own uh, subsections. So with system options here, I'll be covering uh, performance settings, optimization settings, and customization. And then document properties will go over drafting, <coughs> excuse me, drafting standard units and image quality. So I'm going to switch over to the SOLIDWORKS window here. And in the SOLIDWORKS window, I just have an open document here, uh, and all my settings are basically default. So to access system options, we can do so by clicking on this gear icon towards the top of the window. It'll open up a dialog box that splits into two tabs for system options and document properties. So in the left side of the screen in this dialog box is where we find the subsections for our system options. And the first section we're going to look at here is performance. So all the options contained in this section relate to the performance of the software. Uh, so stuff like verification on rebuild, um, level of detail. We have some assembly settings here. And a little further down, we have some checks box, or excuse me, check boxes uh, that allow us to control the graphics performance of our software. So Scrolling back to the top here, um, with the verification on rebuild, I recommend that you take that off. Uh, it's not really good to keep that on, especially if you have really uh, resource heavy files. Uh, it's definitely going to slow down your system if you keep that on. In terms of the checkboxes down here, um, <clears throat> if you find yourself running into some lag issues, uh, you can turn off stuff like shaded preview uh, and updating mass properties while saving the document. That will definitely save on some time as well. Now, if you're a person that works a lot with large assemblies, the assembly section is going to be uh, a place you definitely want to visit. Uh, the area I want to focus on here is the opening a large assembly options and then large assembly settings. So the options contained in this section allow us to elect to use stuff like lightweight mode and large assembly settings that speed up our performance based on the number of components in an assembly that we're opening. So you can actually control when this or when these modes enable based on the total number of components in your assembly. So if you know you have assemblies that are in the thousands of components, you know, you could set something below a thousand and have that turn on automatically when you open up the file. And then down here where we have our large assembly settings, these checkboxes control a variety of aspects that again boost the performance of uh, working in large assemblies. So some Key ones here, uh, do not preview hidden components, don't display edges in shaded mode, hide all planes and axes, uh, and all reference geometry. Definitely good things to enable to uh, help speed up your system. So now looking at stuff to optimize our workflow. Um, here in the sketch section of the system options, we have an option called auto rotate view, normal to sketch plane on sketch creation and sketch edit. I definitely recommend turning something like this on because it definitely helps with the whole sketching process. So with that option enabled, whether I create a new sketch or edit an existing sketch, let's say I create a new sketch on this face here, it's gonna automatically take me to a view normal to that sketch plane. So I can work within the bounds of my sketch plane and know exactly where I'm at. 
Now, another section in the system options here, the default template section is um, great for controlling what type of documents we create. So each one of these sections for parts, assemblies, and drawings control what templates we use uh, when we create a new document in the software. So you can click on any one of these buttons that allow us to choose which templates we use as a default. So if you don't like having to uh, select the same template over and over again, you can just set it here and save that little bit of time. Uh, and in addition, we have some options here to allow us to use these defaults regardless or prompt the user to select. And then the last section here talking about optimization is the auto recover and backup settings. So backup allows us to create copies of files that we're working in. Um, in the system options, we, are, we can control what directory they're saved to, as well as how long we keep those backups in the folder. And then auto recovery allows us to save information from our current document in case this uh, software crashes or shuts down for whatever reason. And you can control again once, uh, I'm sorry, the directory in which we store these auto recover files. Okay. And then for customization in the system options, we have the color section, which allows us to control aspects like the color of the window for SOLIDWORKS. So, um, default setting here we have on is light, which is this white color. Um, personally, I like to work in a bit of a darker environment, so I might go for something like medium light to reduce the stress on my eyes here. Um, here we have options for the current color scheme, the highlighting options. So this refers to whenever we select something in the software, what color is it gonna highlight to? So if you're not a fan of the standard blue color, If I can get to my system options here, I'm having a little difficulty, but there we go. Going back to the color section here, below the current color scheme dropdown, we have color scheme settings where we have a very large list of various elements within the software that we can control the color of. So um, to give an example, the state definition of a sketch, we can control what color uh, the sketch turns into once it reached, uh, reaches that state. And then last thing I'm gonna cover here for customization in the system options is the file location section. So if you're a user of custom templates and uh, things of that nature, custom library uh, feature parts and files, you can add directories to the location of those custom uh, elements through this area of the system options. So say for example, I have a bunch of custom build material templates that I use quite often. I can go to the build material templates in this dropdown, click on the add button, locate my directory, hit select folder, and that'll add my directory to my system software uh, settings, which will then allow me to access my build materials whenever I create a new build material table. All right, now switching back to the document properties, um, three aspects I wanna cover here for uh, customization are the drafting standard. So the drafting standard is uh, set in this location of the system settings. Typically with uh, you know people that work in the US of A, we use stuff like ANSI and ISO for our systems, or I'm sorry, our drafting standards. But if you use some sort of custom standard, you can choose it from this drop down list here. Or if you have a drafting standard saved to an external file, you can locate it or load it in uh, using this option here. In the same area, we have the ability to control the uh, text for our notes, tables, and dimensions. We can elect to uh, use all uppercase letters for those if we want. Next, we have the unit section, which controls the unit scheme for the document we're working in. We have standard stuff like meter, centimeter, millimeter, and inches. If we select the custom option, we can use this area down here to sort of pick and choose what unit schemes we want for what unit of measurement. So for example, if I want to change my length to something like meters, I can click in this unit cell for length, choose my meters, and maybe I wanna use pounds for mass. I can do the same thing, click in that cell, select pounds from this 
list, and I've just set my unit scheme for my new document. And then last thing we're going to talk about with our document properties is the image quality. And I think this is probably the most important. So this kind of relates back to performance when we have issues with graphics lagging and a lot of slow um, movement when we're working in the software. Uh, I'd say about 70 to 80% of the time it ties back to the image quality of the document. So this slider bar up here controls the image quality of the document we're working in. And this area here where we see this little wireframe circle is our preview to show us how good or bad the graphics are. So on the slider bar, the further we put it to the left, the worse the graphics become, but the higher our performance goes and vice versa. The further we put it to the right, the better our graphics look, but the worse our system performs. So my recommendation is for all document types to put the slider bar somewhere between left and center. That gives you what I call the mo most bang for your buck in terms of graphics and performance. Because if we look at our preview window here, the preview doesn't look too bad. I'm not seeing a lot of jagged geometry on this circle. But again, my slider bar is low enough to where my system resources aren't being taxed. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the PowerPoint. And now we're gonna dive into the customization. Now I've kind of broken this down into three main sections where we'll talk about customization at the document level and then also at the user interface level and then lastly using the customized dialog box. So with customization at the document level, uh, we have our system options and document properties that we've explored, but we also have options with the feature manager design tree, more specifically what we can display in it and how it is displayed. So switching back to SolidWorks here, if I right click on the top level name of my part in my feature tree, hover my cursor over to the tree display options, I get this list of options to control stuff like showing feature names and descriptions, showing component names and descriptions, showing component configuration names and descriptions, and much more. And then lastly, we have the heads up view toolbar, which enables us to control our hide and show options. So what I mean by that is this little eyeball icon here in this transparent toolbar. If we click on the little down arrow just to the right of the icon, we get a drop down list of additional icons that allow us to toggle on and off these various elements in the software. So if I wanna see axes at all times, I can click on the axes button. If I want to look at the origin at all times, I can click that and show the origin, so on and so forth. And you can see I have quite a few already enabled. Um, if you want to turn them off, all you got to do is click the same icon. All right. So that's customization at the document level. Now, customization at the user interface is a little more expansive. Um, most of the user interface customization is done through the right-click menu of the command manager, where we can access stuff like tabs, toolbars, and the customized dialog box, which has its own unique section here. So if I right-click somewhere on the command manager, I get this right-click menu. And the first two options I have are to enable the command manager and to use large buttons with text. Uh, personally, I'd recommend keeping the command manager on as it's my favorite way of accessing any command in this software. It's very interactive and it's fun to use. So moving through the list here, we got tabs. The tabs option allows us to control what tabs are in the command manager. So say for instance, I'm somebody who works a lot with mold designs, die cuts, um, whatever it might be in the injection molding uh, sector. I might add something like surfaces and mold tools to my command manager. So I can click on surfaces, add that surfaces section of my command manager, and then again, go to tabs, right click, go to tabs, select mold tools, and add that as well. Now, if I right click on the command manager again, we have our toolbars option. Now, if you're not familiar with toolbars, they work kind of similarly to the command manager in that most of the commands are uh, located in the toolbar, but the location of their placement is a little bit different. So toolbars are separate from the command manager. If you add a toolbar to your window, it'll likely appear on the left, the right, or the bottom of your SOLIDWORKS window. So using another example here, say I work a lot with like weld mints and structure systems. <clears throat> 
I can add these weldment and structure system toolbars to my window. So I'll click on weldments here. I'll add my weldments toolbar on the left. I can go to toolbars again and select my structure system. And I'll again, again, it'll add it to the left here. Now, once the toolbar has been added, you can actually move it to another part of your window. Uh, to do so, you hover your cursor over it until you see this cursor, the two arrows in the cross formation. Once you see that, you left click, drag it to a new area of the SOLIDWORKS window, and then let go of the left mouse button. So now I've just put my structure system toolbar at the bottom of my SOLIDWORKS window. Now, one thing you'll notice is that as I continue to add toolbars, the window that I have for workspace is uh, ever so shrinking. So my recommendation is if you're going to use toolbars that you keep the toolbars to a minute or I'm sorry, a maximum of three to four. If you go anywhere past four, the window gets way too crowded and becomes almost unworkable. So uh, just be a little cautious when you add toolbars. Uh, try to be a little conservative with that. All right, so now we get into the meat of this presentation, the customized dialog box. So the customized dialog box allows us to control a variety of the user interface, stuff like the toolbars, the shortcut toolbars, uh, commands, keyboard shortcuts, and mouse gestures. So let's go ahead and dive into that. So to access the customized window, I right click somewhere on the command manager and click customize. You can reach the same area by going to the um, settings, clicking on the little down arrow next to that and selecting customize from there as well. So let me right click on the command manager, select customize, and here's our customized dialog box. So the first tab we have in the dialog box is the toolbars. Now this toolbar section functions in the same way as the right click menu from the command manager. It allows me to turn toolbars on and off. Only key difference though is we check the checkbox next to the toolbar we want to enable and uncheck it if we want to remove it. But as you can see in this tab, we have much more than just toolbars. We have options to enable the command manager. We have options to control the size of our icons. We have options to show tooltips and how they're displayed. If you're not familiar with tooltips, those are the little messages you get when you hover your cursor over a command. And then lastly, we have options for the context toolbar here as well. Now the shortcut bar section deals with the shortcut toolbars in SOLIDWORKS. If you're not familiar with shortcut toolbars, they're activated by pressing the S key on the keyboard. And it'll bring a toolbar next to your cursor to where you can select the command from the toolbar. Going back to that shortcut bars tab, we can customize our shortcut bars by adding commands, removing commands, and resizing the toolbar. Now with shortcut toolbars, uh, they're considered contextual, which basically means that the toolbar that appears on your screen will uh, be a result of whatever document that you're in. So the shortcut toolbar you have for parts is gonna be different for the toolbar you have for assemblies, is different from drawings and sketches. So let's say I want to add a command to my uh, part shortcut toolbar. Say I want to add the SOLIDWORKS add-ins. What I can do is I can left click and hold on the SOLIDWORKS add-ins icon, drag my cursor over to the toolbar, and then once I see that green plus on my cursor, I let go of my left mouse button to add it. Once the command's been added, I can move it around by left clicking and holding on it, and then just dragging it to a new position. And then lastly, if I want to remove a command from this toolbar, I can left click and hold on the icon, drag it off to the side, and once I see that X on my cursor, I can let go of the left mouse button. All right, so while you're in this tab, um, all the icons for commands will be listed here. You can use this area to filter your results a little bit further. Uh, so if you're looking for a specific command, you can filter it like that, or you can just search the command name above. Now, moving to the commands section, uh, we can see that the interface is kind of similar to shortcut bars, but in this section, we can actually just add commands to our heads up view toolbar or command manager just by dragging and dropping. So 
the process is the same as the shortcut bars. If I want to add a command to the heads up view toolbar or to the command manager, I just left click and hold on the icon, drag it again to the heads up view toolbar or command manager, let go of the left mouse button and add it. And as you might imagine, to remove it, same process, drag it off to the side and dump it. Now, the keyboard section is used to define custom keyboard shortcuts. Now, most of the keyboard shortcuts in the SOLIDWORKS software are tied to some sort of native window shortcut. So you can see stuff like Control N for new, Control O for open, Control W for close. But we can always create our own custom shortcuts for all the commands within this software. So the way that we go about creating a sheet, uh, excuse me, a keyboard shortcut is by first finding the command that we want to create a shortcut for. So let's say I want to create a shortcut for an extrusion. I'm going to use the search tool up here to locate the extrude command. Once I find it, I type in the shortcut cell. And then I just type out the shortcut I want to use for my command. So something like maybe control shift and E to initiate an extrusion. I just type control shift and E and then hit OK. And once that happens, I can now use the control shift E to initiate an extrusion. So I'll do that. And there's my extrusion property manager. Okay, so there's the keyboard shortcut area. Uh, one thing to note is if you want to create some sort of physical reference document that allows you to view all the keyboard shortcuts that you currently have based on your system settings, you can use the options print list to print out a list of the keyboard shortcuts, or you can press copy list to copy that list to a text document. Now we've come to the final tab that we'll be discussing in the customized dialog, my personal favorite, mouse gestures. So mouse gestures work similarly to shortcut toolbars. The key difference is in how they're initiated. So with a shortcut toolbar, I press the S key to bring it up to my cursor. For a mouse gesture, I hold down on the right mouse button and then drag my cursor to the command I want to initiate. So going back to that customize window and the mouse gesture tab, like shortcut toolbars, mouse gestures are contextual. So based on whether you're in a part, assembly, drawing, or sketch, that'll change the commands in the wheel. While you're in the customize dialog box, to customize the mouse gesture wheels, to remove a command, it's the same process. You left click and hold on the command, drag it off to the side, let go of the left mouse button, and then to add a command, you find the command you want to add, left click and hold, drag it to that empty spot, and then let go of the left mouse button. Now with mouse gestures, we have the ability to control how many gestures go into the wheel. We can have as little as two gestures in a vertical or horizontal fashion, or as many as 12 gestures. My personal recommendation is if you're interested in using mouse gestures, start off with four gestures and get comfortable with using those. And then once you get comfortable enough to progress, go up to eight gestures. I don't recommend using 12 gestures because of, as you can see with 12 gestures in the wheel, there's a high margin for error in picking the wrong command from the wheel. So again, my recommendations start with four. Once you get good with that, go to eight. And then last thing here, like keyboard shortcuts, if you want a physical reference guide to the mouse gestures based on your system, excuse me, system settings, you can print your gesture guides and have a physical reference available to you. All right, so we got one more section here for this presentation, which is just a miscellaneous bonus uh, tips and tricks that you might find useful in working in SOLIDWORKS. So the first little tip. Uh, that I have here is for the confirmation corner um, and how we can use the D key to bring it up to your cursor. So let's say, for example, I'm in a sketch. I draw my sketch geometry, dimension it out, and now I'm ready to exit my sketch and create a feature. 
Well, maybe I don't want to go all the way over to this confirmation corner on the right side of the screen. I just want to bring it over to where my cursor is now. I can do that if I hit the D key. And from there, I can click on the OK button, accept my sketch. And I didn't have to go all the way to that confirmation corner, saving me that little bit of time. Now, the same thing works as a, or excuse me, same thing works if I'm in a feature. So if I edit this boss extrude here, we can see we have the green check and the red X in the confirmation corner. At this point, to complete my command, I can hit the D key, click on the green check, and accept all my changes. Now, if that happens to you where you're in your sketch or feature, you hit the D key and it's on your cursor and you say, oh, I don't want it on my cursor anymore. If you hit the D key again, it'll go right back to its original position. Okay, so um, you can use the right click shortcut to complete a command or move through the options in a command. So say, for example, in my part here, I go to create a full round fillet. A full round fillet feature requires multiple selections. As you can see here, I got three selection boxes that I need to add elements to. So what I can do with this right click shortcut is after I make my first selection here, you can see my cursors indicating a right click will proceed to the next selection box. If I right click, the purple selection box becomes active. So now I can just move my cursor up to the next face, make my selection, do another right click, make my last selection. And now if I right click, it'll complete the command for me. So I don't have to go all the way back to the property manager and accept it. So a nice little shortcut to have for accepting and moving through a command. Um, I mentioned here F5, the key on your keyboard will activate the filter toolbar. I always like to mention this, uh, especially for newer users, because oftentimes uh, this little issue comes up where you're working in SOLIDWORKS, you're working pretty fast. All of a sudden you have this weird pink funnel icon on your cursor that kind of looks like this. Um, that's just indicating that the filter tool has been turned on. Uh, if this ever happens to you and you want to turn it off, you just hit F5 on your keyboard to bring up the filter toolbar. Click on the bolded filter icon to turn off the filter, and then you can just press F5 once more to close out the filter toolbar. So using the search bar, we can locate commands uh, in the interface. So if you're unsure as to where a command is and you want to locate it, if you use the search bar here, let's say, for example, I'm looking for the command uh, sweep. I type in sweep, locate my command, swept boss slash base, and I click on this little eyeball icon next to it. After I click on it, if I don't move my cursor, my cursor will snap over to that command and SOLIDWORKS will point out where it's located. So it's a great little shortcut to uh, sort of remind yourself of where a command is. And then the last thing I mentioned here is control B and control Q, the two uh, shortcuts for rebuilding. The difference between the two is control B will just be a regular rebuild, uh, essentially like clicking the stoplight icon at the top of the window versus control Q, which is a forced rebuild, which will force everything in the feature tree to refresh or rebuild. Well, excellent. Thank you very much, Cameron. There's a lot of good tips in there, a lot of, you know, a lot of helpful things. And I'll even say, as an experienced SOLIDWORKS user, a lot of what Cameron mentioned is extremely useful. Uh, so good stuff for everybody, regardless of where you're at in, in your SOLIDWORKS experience level. So again, thank you everyone for your attendance today. We appreciate it. Cameron, thank you so much for the presentation and, and coming up with the content. Oh, very nicely done. Some great tips you've shared with us all. Yep, thank you. It's been my pleasure.